this lesson, we're going to be connecting to a JSON file, outputting the contents of the JSON file, both within a local JSON file and also within a web-based JSON file. We're going to be using two different methods, so an older HTML, HTTP request object. So making the connection, wait until we've got the connection, parsing the data as JSON, and then making use of it within the code. And then there's also the newer format, which is a whole lot simpler, where we can just do what we had before, just in a few lines of code. I'm just going to clean that up quickly. And you can see that this one is a lot simpler to write, and it provides you the same output as all of these lines of code. The first example, we're going to be using the HTML HTTP request object in order to create a new request in order to select content from our JSON file. And then we'll also be collecting and selecting the content from an external JSON file. So this one's sitting locally within the HTML file folder as well as the JavaScript file folder. I've got it open on the right hand side and we're going to be outputting that content into the browser. So first of all, we're going to be making the request object in order to handle the on load and the on error. So go ahead and select your JavaScript file. We're going to be creating a URL. And the URL in this case is just going to be the link to wherever the JSON data is. And currently right now it's just sitting in a file called my JSON. So what we want to do is we want to create the XHR object. And I'm also going to be showing you the newer method uh, using fetch in order to make the HTTP get request. So it's going to be coming up as well. So first off, we're going to be creating and creating the XHR object. So this is a new XML HTTP request object. And this is how you initiate and create it. We can console log out the contents of that object as well in order to take a closer look at what is available within that object. So there we've got our request object and the initial state. So we've got null, we're currently on ready state change, then the ready state starts at zero. So we move through all of the different ready states. And then in the last one, the fourth one, that's where we're actually going to get the data. So let's initiate the XHR and we're going to open it. We need to specify the method. And in this case, we're going to be using get the get method and then whatever the URL is that we're connecting to. So that's what we've got there, the URL. And right now we're still sitting at, so we see that nothing has changed. So even if we move the console there after the open, now what we see is that the ready state is at one, but we haven't actually sent it. And then that's the next ready state where we're gonna be making the send of the XHR object. And then you just initiate that by the send method. And you can also log out after that as well. And what happens there is that we see that the ready state has gone to four. So it's gone through all of the steps and it's made all of the changes and moving through to ready state four. From the XHR request, so we want to actually pick up the JSON data. And what we're going to be doing is making the HTTP get request to a JSON endpoint. So that's going to be that JSON file that we have there. So we've made all of this and now let's add in the additional content. We can remove out the console logs. So we don't need those anymore. We don't need to be tracking what the console log is outputting. So the process is still the same. We declare the object. We open the object with the URL that we want to do. And now we need to also add in the on load. So this is actually going to be the function that's going to track the changes within the object. And we can also check to see and add in some conditions here. So we've got our XHR status. And we want to check to see if the status is 200. And if the status is equal to 200, then that means that there's data that's been received. And then we can take that data and using the JSON parse, because we're getting it within the JSON format, we can take the XHR response text and take that text value and turn it into usable data, usable data object. And we can put it into the console for now. And this would actually be a numeric value, not a string value of 200. That's why we weren't able to return back the result. So there we've got all of the different items in the JSON file. We've got the array of items that's been returned back. And then of course we can make use of it. Uh, if it's not 200, what we'll do is we'll console log and output instead of console log, let's just do console error. And we'll get the XHR and then the status text. 
So this will show us if there's any errors and catch any errors. And right now we don't have any errors, so we're, we don't have any errors being output into there. Uh, you can also catch errors within the XHR on error method. And that could just be attached to a function. And within the console error, we can get the XHR status text. So this will, once again, catch any errors that might be encountered. So let's say we've got the URL that doesn't end anywhere. So we've got uh, the errors that are being caught and being output into the console there. So that's how you can use the XHR object in order to select and get JSON data. And now there, of course, there is a newer format that uh, is better to use than the XHR format, and that's going to be making a fetch request. So this is going to be very straightforward where we use the fetch method. We connect to the URL and by default, it's going to be using the get method. So we don't have to specify where we did over here, get. And what happens here is that these are chained together promises. So once we get a response back, so this is going to be returned back to a response object. We can also take that response object and we can return it back as text. Or if we know that we are getting it back as JSON, there's a JSON method as well that allows us to return it back as JSON. So once we get the data back, then we can take the data and log it out into the console and use it within our JavaScript code. There's also a catch. So this is uh, similar to what we saw where we were getting and capturing the errors. So where we can catch the errors. And then for now, what we'll do is we'll just output in console log the errors. So this obviously is much shorter. We're getting the same output being put out into the console. And this is the newer method in order to do that. where We're using the fetch instead of the XHR object. So that's the difference. This is the previous method and a lot more state syntax there, whereas fetch is a lot more straightforward. And then if you want to make use of the data, so let's go ahead and we're going to select the element with a class of output so that we can make use of it and output that content. So we're selecting the element with a class of output. So using the document and query selector, using the period and then output class element. And this will select the output element. And then as we get the data over here, uh, we'll just add that into a function here where we can send the data in order to the output. Actually, let's do that. We will create a function and I'll just call it maker. And this is just going to take one argument in, which is going to be the data. So it's going to be an expecting an array for the data. So that means that we can use the for each method and get uh, the contents of the for each method and take output in our HTML. We'll just add to it. So I'm going to use the back ticks. And this is actually going to be within an object format as well. So let's uh, do a JSON stringify for now method of the element output. And then we can get that in a little bit more detail, better detail. So instead of outputting to the console, I'm going to output it into the output area here within the web page. And then we'll do the same here for this one. So I'll we'll output it twice there. And then just between there, as we're launching the two different methods, I'm going to add a horizontal line so that we can distinguish between the two. And notice what happened here is actually when we added in the horizontal rule that added in at the top, and that's because both of these methods are waiting for completion of the request object, and that's why it adds it into the top. So if you want to actually add it in afterwards, you have to add it in after the maker. So we can do that as well, where we can just add in, and that will give us a better output that's more readable. So now that we've got the output, it's within a JSON format. We can also take this because it's going to be an object format. So we can take this object information and if we want to output it in a little bit clearer format, let's do that as well. And these are back ticks, so that allows me to do the line breaks and it's not going to break the output. And then within the curly brackets, this is where I can select and I can output the variable values. So within the element object, we do have a name. And within there, we've got an object for first. 
So that outputs the value there for the first part of the name. And then we also have a last value. So we can add that also into the output. So instead of first, uh, let's have this as last. So there we've got the first name and the last name. And we can also do things like if we want to get the age, that one is also available. So that's simply within the element. And I believe it's going to be in the element age value. So there's the age, uh, location, and so on. So all of that can be output as well. So that gives you some options as you're outputting the content. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, wrap this within the small elements. So it's a little bit smaller. And there we've got the actual data that we're pulling out of the element. And here we've got uh, just the whole JSON data object. And then we can select out the values that we want to select from that one. Now, in order to access it online, I actually do have the same JSON data online. And that's going to be sitting at a web page. So if we go to this web page, this is going to be the output. And it's as easy as just pointing it to the new URL. So now what it's going to be doing is it's going to be picking up that same data from the URL and stuff in the JSON file. So you can do it locally in order to practice. Or if you do have an endpoint set up and you do want to get the JSON data, then you can do it this way as well in order to select it and output it. So go ahead and try it and to get more familiar with the XHR object and then also, of course, the fetch method, which is more commonly used now within the JavaScript coding.